third webinar. This one's coming from Chiang Mai, and uh, this is the view from the hotel we're currently staying at. Um, not quite as exotic as our previous locations, but uh, maybe there's nothing wrong with that. Um, can I have some feedback on the sound, please, before I go any further? Uh, Barry, can you send me a little message on uh, whether we've got OK on, on sound? OK, I'm getting nothing back, so I'm assuming uh, good. OK, thank you for that. OK, we're going to um, first look at a quick uh, presentation I put together. Let me make this thing work. She never seems very keen on doing. OK, there we go. Um, OK, the... Uh, Okay. Um, right thought, right action, right skills. Um, the reason I want to go through this is because it's basically the process we want to go through for success. And that's basically what we're here today to do, is to understand how to make things work for us in, in the markets and, and in life. I think, I think the broader issue is here as well. Um, I use this example when I introduced Mark's seminar uh, last October, his FTSE seminar. And I made the point that Mark had the right thought when he contacted me um, and uh, suggested we hold a seminar together, because that way we got together, and if you hadn't actually had that thought, we probably wouldn't be giving, well, we wouldn't be giving a seminar, this webinar here this evening, and you wouldn't be where you are this evening either. Um, but of course, having the right thought in itself is not enough. You've got to, in fact, also do something. You've got to you know, actually have the right action. Many people think uh, a lot, but it's actually quite a few people actually do something about it. Um, which is, I mean, you're here today. That's, that's You've taken the right thought, you've had the right action, you're here. Um, but also, it's as you go along, having had the right thought, you need the persistence. And as you, get, as you persist, you get the right skills. So Mark, for example, has never organized a seminar in his life before. But as he went along, he acquired those skills and succeeded in holding a seminar. I came along, we met, and you know, the rest is history, and here we are today. Um, but that in itself does not bring global success, because it's when you keep repeating that process that you get experience. And experience is where the, the greater success lies, and if you continue with that, you get clarity of vision. And I think clarity of vision is what we're all aiming for, and it's what our services are about to, to a large extent. Um, it's important, I think, to have a, a larger blueprint, particularly with something like the POM service we're looking at later on, um, you know, that the purpose of these things is, is to give the people who are, are enrolled on, on the programs, something clear, a, a clear process which takes them to the next stage. So that was my, that's the theme of today's webinar, I guess. So we'll now move right on to the next next section. By the way, you can ask questions. Um, there's a question box. Uh, uh, we don't normally take uh, verbal questions. We did try that once, but uh, we had three people, all of whom um, failed to really make themselves heard because of their microphone, etc. Uh, so we take questions, uh, of course we have got, had many questions by email, which is by far the best route, but also try and answer them as we go along. Um, so we'll now jump to a few, few of the questions that we've, we've got in by email. Um, <clears throat> so the first one is, is there any, in your opinion, more profitable trading option at the moment than trading basic currencies, you know, as you mentioned, pound, dollar, euro, dollar? Um, Personally, I don't think there's any particularly profitable market in the sense that any one market is better than any other market, although, of course, some are moving far more actively than others at any one time. But I think there are markets that suit individual traders, and, it's, and part of the trading process is, is to find the markets that suit you. Uh, I mean, for, as an example, if you have a market moving quite dramatically, and you could say the Dow is doing quite well, we're looking at the Dow in a minute, um, then that suits people who, who look for fast action. Uh, some people like to sell options, for example. I've done that myself for many years. Uh, and really, you want quiet markets, that kind of action. So the answer really is it's a matter of finding the market that, that suits you. Um, next question, will the demise of various euro countries' currencies see a greater need for the UK to be more tied to the US? Um, will that see a weakening of the pound? Um, this is really a very far-reaching question. There's so many, so many parameters that could happen. Um, I think the euro is going to have a lot of trouble. I think the political will on the euro is very strong. Um, I think that it will probably survive, but quite in what state, I don't know, because I think there's bound to be some, some countries leaving, um, and you know, it will come under pressure. I'm sure that the euro will weaken, uh, and will be volatile over the coming few years, 
uh, but quite how, how the UK will fare in all this, it's just really impossible to say. Uh, Mark, the next question is down to you. Okay, firstly, uh, good morning to all of you um, in the UK and wherever else you are in the, um, in the world. Um, the next question that uh, has been brought thought is, which do you place more emphasis on, price action or technical indicators? Um, now, actually, they're pretty much the same thing, but technical indicators are just price action uh, interpreted in a different manner, um, but they are lagging. So, uh, definitely, 100% price action takes precedence over technicals. And um, you know, my subscribers will know that I don't actually pay attention to technical indicators at all now. Actually, um, I, I used to look at RSI, and that's starting to fade out now as well. So, price action is um, is key for trading. Um, and then we've got um, you, someone would like to learn to trade. Where is the best place to start? Um, I mean, there's 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 knowledge all over the uh, internet on trading, but I mean, John Piper's the way to trade. Uh, quite a few people have read that. For me, when I read that, that was a, that was a great great book. Um, I think for any novice traders, it's definitely a place to start. And then once you've got a good grounding. Um, you know, there's seminars. I, I personally, I do, a, I do a seminar which provides people with a good foundation and the, and the right path to successful trading. Uh, but just be aware of, I mean, you can fill yourself with so much information out there, but um, the key to trading is, you know, don't make it too complicated. Okay. Sorry, yes. Um, just answer one of the questions on the floor. Uh, the question is, as an amateur options trader, mostly writing covered calls on physical shareholdings. I'm um, whether in your experience, spreading options are generally found to be less useful than binary bets. Um, so spread betting options. It really depends on what you're trying to do, really. Um, you know, I think it, whatever strategy you use, it's a question of becoming an expert in that strategy and, and becoming familiar with it. I, I wouldn't say that there's any particularly training vehicle that's necessarily better than any other training